seven years now. Know my voice. Nobody can save me but Christ. He saved me in a Marine Corps barracks. If we confess our sins, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Across the world coming live to you from my war room here in Dallas, Texas. And friends coming live to you from my war room here in Detroit, Michigan. You from our war room here in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, here in Allen, Texas. And even though the location has changed, our Father's word never does. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. The Lord said, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Listen to me. The word of God has it right. Hey, family and friends all across the world coming live to you from my war room here in Dallas, Texas, where we just honor the spirit of the Lord on tonight for sharing life in him and sharing his word with you. Listen, we are in the war room here, magnifying the Lord in worship and communion with him. <clears throat> we want to welcome everyone on tonight uh, into the war room here at Dallas, Texas. Uh, today's date is March 17th. It's a Wednesday. We're on Central Standard Time here. It's about 7.55 uh, p.m. We're just in the war room, as I said, just worshiping the Lord and the beauty of holiness. Listen, we're going to jump right in uh, today in a series that we began at the uh, turn of the year and uh, entitled, uh, My Heart is for You. And it was a revelation in worship that the Spirit of the Lord induced in my heart as I was worshiping my Heavenly Father uh, because we are in a season in the world today, in the United States of America, and the nations of the world over, where many hearts have waxed cold. We know that Jesus said in the end times uh, this would occur. And so as I was in worship, the Spirit of the Lord just induced my heart to say to my Heavenly Father, regardless of who else turns from you, regardless of who else backslides, regardless of who else puts their hand to the plow and draws back unto perdition, Father, my heart is for you. It is a banner cry of loyalty. It is a banner cry of true worship in spirit and in truth. It is a banner cry before my Father in heaven. He says that he would never leave us nor forsake us. And so my heart to him was, Lord, I'll never leave you nor forsake you so that we can say like as the Apostle Paul did, that nothing shall be able to separate us from the love in Christ Jesus. And so uh, it, it, it is my heart's cry to him that, Father, nothing in this world, no one in this world, whether it's angelic, demonic, uh, human, nothing's going to separate my heart from yours. As I know, see, whenever our hearts get separated from the Lord, it's a proximity issue. The proximity issue is never of the Lord, for he never moves away from us. And, and away from us. And I've been ministering that a lot lately as I've traveled the country uh, to many individuals. Uh, when there's a proximity issue between us and the Lord, it is never that the Lord has moved away from us. It is always that we move away from him. And so the old saints, when I was growing up in the church, term that as backsliding and, and the Bible terms it as backsliding. And so they were correct as the word of God is in their rendering. And so we just bless the spirit of the Lord on tonight. Listen, we're going to jump right in our lesson again. Uh, our, our, this is our second period of sharing in a series entitled, My Heart is for You. Um, we spent um, a great amount of time in our previous series. And so at the turn of the year, the spirit of the Lord uh, begin to lay on my heart that we were to uh, move into the next uh, period of instruction and prophetic revelation that the Holy Ghost uh, wanted to teach and to share with us. And so, um, again, if, if you missed the uh, first installment um, to this, it was entitled, uh, My Heart is for You. And the, and, the, and the subject concern there, or the thought of concern was um, an apostate stone. And if you miss that, you can go on all of our platforms. We are on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and also, and you can go on Facebook and Instagram at Bishop uh, G.A. Cox. You can go on our website, um, Bishop um, 
gacox.org uh, or .com. And, um, and also, you can catch us on YouTube. Again, Bishop Dr. Guy A. Cox will bring us up on YouTube. So you can go on all those aforementioned platforms. Uh, my team is going to throw those up on the screen for you there shortly. And you can go on all those aforementioned platforms uh, to view the uh, first uh, installment in this, uh, the first period of sharing in this new series entitled My Heart is for You. And if you missed any of the others, um, they're all listed on the website. They're listed on YouTube. Again, we're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. Um, we, we, we have everything listed on the website. There are writings on the website. Um, if you're a reader such as I am, um, we have made those available on the website. There's evangelism, there's giving. Listen, we made, my team has made everything available on the website. Again, www.bishopgacox.org. You can go on there and everything is on there. If you'd like to support us as we endeavor to do the work of the Lord, uh, this ministry is touching the nations of the world. Um, you can, you can, uh, go into the giving section there. There's a rubric there entitled giving. You can go there. And we have all the ways that you can give uh, to the ministry listed there. And um, as we trust the Spirit of the Lord and as He leads us, um, those funds are 100% allocated to the work of the Lord. We take His money seriously. This has nothing to do with us. We are just obeying the Spirit of the Lord as He leads us. Many of you have already given. We just want to praise and thank the Lord from you from the bottom of our hearts because Without your support, listen, the Lord's work will still go forward, but it's so much easier when we all band together and come together in a common goal. And if you love the Lord and you love his work like I do, then you understand exactly uh, what I'm saying and what I'm sharing with you all. So we want to, uh, from Cox Community Church of Dallas, Texas, myself, First Lady Jennifer, we just want to praise the Lord for all of you that have already given. And we just honor the spirit of the Lord for you. And again, for those of you that would like to uh, support, we also have a ministry that uh, that ships Bibles um, into um, some, uh, even to some remote places in the world. We have a uh, Bible for Believers ministry that our First Lady uh, began in 2020, and uh, and that ministry is designed for one specific purpose, and that is to make sure that new believers have Bibles in their hands. And so we're endeavoring to do that work domestically here in the United States of America and the world over. So we just bless and honor the Spirit of the Lord as He gives us and directs us in His work. Uh, in theology, we refer to this as divine providence. So we praise the Lord. Uh, it simply means, for all of you who may not understand, simply means the direct and creativity of the Lord. And so as He creatively directs us in His work, we are faithful just to do what the Spirit of the Lord has laid on our heart, all right? Um, so, we have a scripture medley. We're going to dive right in. We have a long way to go on tonight. Mm -hmm. As many of you who follow us and are with us, you, you well know, I am a preacher of the gospel. I'm a Bible teacher. I believe in teaching the saints and preaching to the sinners. The unadulterated, non-filtered, uh, non-watered-down word of the Lord by the revelation of His Spirit and by His presence and His power. So, we praise the Lord for the Holy Ghost. Uh, and, and certainly we have invited the Spirit of the Lord into this place uh, uh, for, uh, for time uh, as we approach this period of sharing. Again, we just bless the Lord for all of you that are with us and all of you that will partake of this video at any point uh, throughout the years here because the Spirit of the Lord uh, will cause this word um, to remain in the presence of the public and so that many will be able to hear and come to uh, his presence and his power as he sees fit. All right, we're going to dive right in here again. As I said, we have a scripture medley, medley, and so I'm going to give us the, our substratum scripture. We'll start with that as Ezekiel, the 36th chapter. It's the 20th through the 30th verse. Many of you who partook of the first period of Sharon, you're well aware of that. There's always a substratum scripture that the Lord, uh, it simply means base scripture that the Lord lays on our heart. I also want to invite you to our main scripture text for this period of Sharon is Ezekiel, the 28th chapter. We're going to read the first through the tenth verse there. Listen, we got eight uh, passages of scripture we're going to partake of tonight. We're really going to feed in the word of the Lord. And you say, Bishop, why would we do that? We're going to do that because the King Jesus told us, and he told us as he was contending with uh, Satan himself and putting Satan right in his place, he said to us, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word 
that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And so we're going to seriously partake of his word. I believe in partaking of the word of the Lord. And so we're going to invite you to our main scripture, Ezekiel, the 28th chapter, the first through the 10th verse. Also ask you to grab Proverbs, the 14th chapter and the 12th verse. Um, this may seem a little overwhelming, but uh, many of you, you know, if you know the ministry and you know, and you've uh, been exposed um, to the ministry the Lord's given me over the years, you know that uh, I, I, I am a quick thinker and a quick speaker, and you know that I can traverse the Bible uh, in a matter of seconds. And so Proverbs, the 14th chapter and the 12th verse, I would also, uh, these are our premise scriptures, by the way, Proverbs 14 and 12, these are the premise scriptures, meaning the ones we are going to begin uh, the concern that the Holy Ghost has for this period of sharing on tonight. Also, the second premise scripture would be James, the first chapter, the 13th through the 15th verse. Again, James, the first chapter, the 13th through the 15th verse. I would also invite you to grab Romans, the sixth chapter, the 17th through the 23rd verse. Again, Romans, the sixth chapter, the 17th through the 23rd verse. There's a, an, uh, a, a uh, matter that we're going to look at there. Finally, there are three quick scriptures that we're going to read, and they are uh, basically synoptic, which means they are uh, looking at the same particular instance, and we're going to glean from the words of our master there, the Lord Jesus, Matthew, the 16th chapter, the 6th through the 12th verse, uh, and these are in a particular order, so I will give them to you now, but I will take us through in the particular order the Holy Spirit has given me, because there is a particular order that we need to look at these three scriptures. But again, Matthew, the 16th chapter, the 6th through the 12th verse, also would ask you to grab Mark, the 8th chapter, the 11th through the 21st verse, Mark, the 8th chapter, the 11th through the 21st verse, and finally, Luke, the 12th chapter, the 1st through the 10th verse, again, Luke, the 12th chapter, uh, the first through the tenth verse. Listen, we're going to dive right in here. And again, um, I just want to uh, um, just really honor the presence of the Lord uh, in the war room on tonight. There's such a, and I'm going to ask everyone as I often do when I know that the word is going to be extra weighty and, and, and extreme in its rendering, I ask everyone to fasten your spiritual seatbelt, hold on to your spiritual socks. This is going to be a weighty word. It is a highly prophetic word. It is nothing new for our ministry and what the Lord um, induces in our hearts to bring before his people and before this watching world, especially this unbelieving world. I'm primarily, by revelation of the Holy Ghost, going to be speaking to the apostate church on tonight and those that are unbelievers. Listen, we have a serious dilemma in the world today, and it concerns the matter of our heart. And I want to share with you just a small excerpt with the Spirit of the Lord and and uh, and, and myself have been communing about these past couple of weeks as I've been away from you. I've been traveling the country. There were serious matters at hand. I received serious phone calls from all over the world, um, people looking for guidance and instruction, people looking, people in serious grief. And so this is a, a very serious time in the United States of America and the nations of the world. And so listen, we are going to dive into this word on tonight. Again, I want to, I want to seriously ask you to fasten your spiritual seatbelts. This word will be highly prophetic again. And again, it is a series, it is a very, I cannot stress this enough because there is a series of judgments that the Spirit of the Lord had us prophesied at the end of 2020. Um, and we really begin to plunge deep into that thought and plunge deep into that revelation. It is continuing. Listen, uh, many have said, hey, you know, we're, uh, you know, I'd be glad when we get out of this. Well, let me, I, I hate to be the one to burst your bubble, but I revelate, but by revelation of the Holy Ghost, we are not going to come out of this series of judgments anytime soon. I know many are looking and they're saying, you know, and have asked me, Bishop, when are we going to come out of this? Do you have any word from the Lord? Yes, I do. And I've already given it. This is nothing new. I'm just reiterating here for those of you who may not be aware. Many of you that follow uh, Cox Community, you're already aware of these uh, revelatory um, prophetic utterances. Listen, the Spirit of the Lord has caused me to be a watchman. And I said to the Lord, the day he uh, alerted me that he was anointing me to do this work was many, over 25 years ago. I said, Father, whenever you're ready for me, I will be uncertain that you will have me ready uh, to use me as a sharp instrument in your hand. And he has done that. And so 28 years I've been ministering this gospel. Listen, and so 
Um, we have a serious situation in the world today, and I want to say this, it is not going away anytime soon. We are in these series of judgment the Spirit of the Lord revealed to us coming into the close of 2020, opening 2021. Listen, that this series of judgments is not going away anytime soon. Many thought, you know, when the first coronavirus first, this corona plague first broke out, coronavirus plague, you know, people thought, oh, we're going to be done in two weeks, then it was four weeks, then it was six weeks, we're, we're well over a year later now going uh working on our second year with this coronavirus plague uh being amongst the nations of the world listen this series of judgments is not going away anytime soon the spirit of the lord revealed to us and not just by self but other watchmen the nations of the world over that we're going to be in this series of judgments for a period of no less than seven years and it could go on as much as a 15 year period and so we are going this is something we're going to have to contend with but i want to remind all of us who are believers in christ and we know this of psalms 91 and listen you say bishop is there uh a remedy for this is there a way that that m myself and my house uh, my household and myself can be protected from this and get yes there is and it is found right in psalms 91 king david said because you have made the most high god el elyon your habitation he says there shall no evil befall you and no plague shall come nigh your dwelling i want to invite all of you i i am so serious when i say this all of you who are far from the kingdom all of you who are backslidden we want to invite you into the kingdom on tonight listen you uh, you must repent you must repent before king jesus he says I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. This is his exclusivist faith. And so he said, wide and broad is the way that leads to destruction, but straight and narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. He also told us there are few uh, that there few there be that find this way see because what we have done in the modern day we are mixing everything in our hearts and we're going to talk about that on tonight and so i just want to touch on that we're mixing everything in our hearts and that stops at that is going to have to stop as of today if we are going to go through and we are going to come up to the other side of this series of judgments these series of judgments and i don't have time to get back in it so again i'm going to invite you to our aforementioned platforms you can go there the spirit of the lord will speak to you if you're an unbeliever this you, you can listen to the word and, and 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 the spirit of conviction the holy ghost will touch your heart listen if you're an unbeliever if you're a backslider this is your time to come into this ark of safety uh, this ark of safety psalms 91 and 1 says he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty and then every uh all of those verses that proceed after that talk about the protection from the snare of the fowler and 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 from the fiery darts of the evil one and from the arrow that fly by day and the terror in the night and the lord promises those who make him their habitation listen to me you must hear what the spirit is saying on tonight those who make the lord the most high god in the hebrew el elyon their habitation i'm talking about you turn your heart to him because his heart is for you those that do that are the only ones that will not perish going through this series of judgments because i promise you as good as you hear my voice and i'm sitting here those of you that continue to resist according to job the 36th chapter the lord says i chastise them uh, the enemy comes comes upon them he kills he still destroys and even though all of this happens to them they still won't turn to me but i promise you that every knee according to the word of the lord i feel like preaching now i, I promise you i do but i'm going to keep my little spirit calm so i can teach in the power and revelation of the holy ghost on tonight that every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ, my King and my Savior, is Lord to the glory of my Father in heaven. We have got to understand we have a serious plague in the world today. And it is not the coronavirus. It is sin in the hearts of men. And we are going to take a look at an Old Testament king who is in the throes of this deathly amalgamation. I write about it. I speak about it all the time by revelation of the Holy Ghost, the deathly amalgamation of humanism and Satanism. It began in the book of Genesis when God came to, I mean, when Satan came to Eve and, 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 and this conversation they had, and then she came to Adam and then man fell. And then the Lord had to tune him up. And then he had to send his son to die to straighten out what the first Adam clearly messed up. And so we have a serious situation of sin in the hearts of men. It is a serious plague. It is so serious that our, that King Jesus told us in Matthew 24, the Lord Jesus said that, that 
that that in the last days the love of many would wax cold and we are in the last days and then according to Isaiah the third chapter it says that your children that the children will begin to disrespect the ancients and 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 the households will begin to be divided Jesus said because he said I didn't come to send peace on the earth but a sword so that the mother uh, will be against the daughter the father against the son there would be war in the household there would be division because the two spirits are at enmity with each other and we are seeing that in the world today we are seeing that in the United States of America and the nations of the world over we see it in the halls of our government from the White House to the State House to your house to listen we are seeing it and so we have a serious problem of sin in the hearts of men today and that is our concern for today let me share with you what the spirit of the lord laid on my heart as his concern for the world in this present time listen it is found namely uh and 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 he gives me this by uh revelation of his presence and his power i'm just sitting there and communing with him he begins to speak to me concerning this and i'm going to share with you what our uh, uh our concern our subject concern is for today listen satan comes in genesis the third chapter to eve and he says and now the lord has already commanded them see and the lord has already given mankind his word but we persist we consistently persist on transgressing the word of the lord and so what we are seeing in this present time is profoundly and prolifically psalms 9 16 and 17 that tells us that w the wicked are ensnared by the works of their own hand we have got to get this word down in our spirit because we are blaming people we are blaming satan yes satan and his forces are moving about yes the four horsemen those mighty four spirits of the apocalyptic vision are riding in the earth right now and if you don't believe Leave it, read Revelation 6 and get yourself up to par. Listen to me. We have got to understand that the Lord gave them a word not, that they were not to transgress. He told them of all the trees in this garden you can eat, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not touch it. For in the day that you eat of that tree, you shall surely die. He told them you shall not eat of it. Not. It's a commandment. It's an apodictic command. It is a command of absolute truth. And so here comes Satan talking to Eve and says, oh, you won't die if you eat of this tree. But the Lord knows you will be as God. He didn't say like God. He said you will be as God. In other words, he's trying to fill her spirit with a perverse word that she will be as God. It's one thing to be like God. It's another thing to be as God. What does it mean to be as God? It means that you have replaced the Lord on your the throne of your heart with yourself. And that's what Satan induced in her heart was a perverse word. He gave her a, a perverse word. And a perverse word is the textbook biblical, biblical definition of a curse a curse is nothing more than a perverse word he cursed this woman the moment she took that perverse word in her heart and ate of that apple satan cursed her she was carrying a curse word and then she took it to her husband he said you will be as god knowing both good and evil let me emphatically state this the lord never meant for mankind to know the doctrine of good and evil he never meant for us to know that the lord doesn't operate in good and evil he operates in holy and unholy he operates in holiness and unholiness isaiah 35 tells us and there shall be a highway there and a way and it shall be called the way of holiness the unclean shall not pass over it come on verse 8 says the fool will not cause error therein verse 9 says that the redeemed but only the redeemed shall walk there we got to get this thing down in our spirit because many of us are resisting the word of the lord and we've been doing it the last plague came in the early of the early turn of the 20th century and it's 102 years later and we have gotten worse as mankind we have four billion people on this planet right now adhering to a perverse word that if they took their last breath right now would bust the lake of fire wide open according to revelation the 19th 20th and the 21st chapter if you don't know what i'm referring to pick up your bible and go to revelation the 19th 20th and the 20th chapter and you'll read about the lake of fire it is a very real place listen to me it is the consummation place of all 
all those who will insist on transgressing the word of the Lord and refuse and continue to reject his word and will not come to them in their hearts. It is a heart issue. It is a heart issue. See, and so what happens is Satan fools, Satan puts this perverse word before Eve and she takes it and she and Eve can't try to blame it on Satan and Adam tried to blame it on Eve. But the bottom line is we are responsible for our own actions. We make choices every day. We are responsible for our choices and we shall receive the consequences whether we like it or not and whether they be consequences that are favorable or they be consequences that are unfavorable. We are responsible for those consequences. Truly the word of the Lord says whatsoever a man soweth that shall he reap. I mean exactly that, shall he reap. And so we need to understand this. We need to understand by revelation of the Holy Ghost that when we make a choice to transgress the word of the Lord, unfavorable actions will, unfavorable consequences, we will be eligible for unfavorable consequences. They will and shall ensue in our life. You say, Bishop, how do you know this? I know it because I'm going to take you to the word. Isaiah, uh, uh, Psalms, the ninth chapter, the 17th verse says that the wicked shall be turned into hell. That's consequences. How do you know, Bishop? Because the 16th verse, I quoted to you, I recited for you earlier, and I quoted to you earlier, it says that, that the wicked are ensnared by the work of their own hands. And so the 17th verse tells us the wicked shall be, because of that, the consequence is the wicked shall be turned into hell or in the Hebrew, that's the word sheol, which means the place of dead. We taught on this before, but the Lord wants me to reiterate again. And so the wicked shall be turned into hell, the place of the dead, and every nation that forgets God. And that's exactly how the United States of America and our in present time and the nations of the world have been living as if God is not present. Well, let me say this, my brothers and sisters, that day is long over. The earth is being purged right now. You say, Bishop, how do you know? I know by revelation of the Holy Ghost, and I know by the affirmation of the scriptures, the Lord has affirmed it with me in the scriptures as he always does. He said, blessed are the meek, for they, for they, not anybody else, for the meek are the only ones that shall inherit the earth. And many of us walking around the day, we're walking around in pride and a haughty spirit. When the word of the Lord says pride comes before destruction, come on, book of Proverbs, and a haughty spirit before a fall. I'm going to repeat that. Pride cometh before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. And what we are plagued with in this day is not the coronavirus only. That is the outward expression. It has come because mankind is plagued with a, a plague that is in, more deadlier than the coronavirus ever could be. And we've been plagued with it since the genesis of mankind. That plague is inherent sin. It is our estrangement from the presence and the power and the word of the Lord that causes us to transgress it. And it is in that transgressing that we receive what we have sown. We are ensnared by the wickedness of our own hands. And we got people walking around talking about, I'm a good person, but I'm going to say it again. The kingdom of God is not in good and evil for the Lord told Adam and Eve to not touch that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but Satan and Duquesne to Eve and by forfeit Eve comes to Adam with a perverse word that caused them to partake of the very thing the Lord told them not. And he came to them with the same perverse word that he instituted in his own heart. And we're going to take a look at that in Ezekiel the 28th chapter. Oh, I promise you we're going to take a look at that. This scripture will, if you've never read this before, you fasten your seatbelts. You are in for a powerfully wild ride in the Holy Ghost on tonight. Listen to me. And so Satan has puffed Eve up with the same perverse word, an era of doctrine. A doctrine, the word doctrine simply means a ordered word in a person's heart. It is a ordered word in your heart. That's what the word doctrine means. It is a ordered word in our hearts. Someone has ordered this word in our hearts. They have said it. And when you set any other word in your heart but the word of the Lord, it becomes 
stone. So there we get the saying set in stone. Many of us have set a perverse word in our hearts. We have set it in stone, which means we will not move away from it. That is the textbook expression of rebellion. And the scripture says rebellion is the sin as which of wit as as the sin of witchcraft. It is the textbook definition of stubbornness. And the Bible says stubbornness is as idolatry. Isn't that interesting? It is extreme, but it is interesting that stubbornness is referred to as is as the sin of idolatry and when we place a word in our hearts that is above the word of the Lord and we reject the word of the Lord we in essence have made ourselves our own gods we are sitting on the throne of our own hearts you can hear it most people's speech in this in present time betrays them you know and and they say, I'm I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it with no regard to the Lord when the apostle wrote they said we should say if if the Lord wills we will do this and do that we will do business or go here and go there many of us don't even have a concern for what the Lord's will is as we go through our days as we deal on our jobs as we deal in our homes as we deal in our political issues in our political circles as they deal in the White House very few are concerned about the heart of the Lord and what his will is. I feel like jumping out this window right now. I'm telling you the power of the Lord is high in this war room. Listen, we must understand, many of us are our own gods. We are practicing a we are living a lifestyle of modern day idolatry. My, modern day idol worship and the worst idols that are being worshipped are we ourselves come on we got to we listen we are going to have to open up our eyes we are going to have to listen one of the problems with oh Israel and it's a problem that we are suffering from today and truly the prophet spoke of it and truly the Lord Jesus spoke of it and truly the apostles spoke of it Many of us, our lips are with the Lord and our heart is far from him. Many of us, our eyes are seen, but they do not perceive. Our ears are hearing, but they do not understand so that we cannot can be converted from our sin and be healed. Because many of us cannot perceive correctly. We do not understand because we are void of the Holy Ghost. Apostate church, this is the state that you're in. Unbelievers, this is the state that you're in. We have rejected the word of the Lord and the King of the Lord, the presence and power of the Lord in this earth realm. When, the, when King Jesus told us that our Father's will was to be done in earth as it is in heaven. I feel like preaching. I'm trying to calm my little spirit down here. But I feel like preaching because the power of the Holy Ghost is high in me. We are going to have to understand that we cannot sit on the throne of our own hearts as God. We are not as God. We are in the image and likeness of God the Father in heaven, but we are not as God. We are not as the eternal Godhead. We are not omniscient. We are not omnipresent. We are not omnipotent. We have transforming creative power that is only available because of the Lord's original creative power. You say, Bishop, why would you point that out? I'm going to point that out because if you die and take your last breath and the Lord rejects you from his kingdom, we don't have the power to build another one. What will you do then? Backslider, unbeliever, sinner, what will you do then? Wicked, rebellious, stubborn. What will you do? What will you do? Because you cannot build your own kingdom. There are only two, the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. You read Revelation 21, the kingdom of darkness is going to be cast into the lake of fire. In the Greek, that word is Gehenna. It doesn't just mean the place of the dead. It means the place of the tormented. For eternity. And all of you and, and inclusionists, doctrinists, and all of you universal doctrinists that want to contend that you're going to come out of this place, Catholicism has it wrong. There is no purgatory. You are not going to come out of the lake of fire. It is eternal. It is an eternal place of torment where King Jesus said there is weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. 
The smoke of their torment, he says, ascends forever. This is not a word that many want to hear because in the modern church today, we don't have spiritual warriors. We don't have spiritual soldiers. As Apostle Paul told his son, Bishop Timothy, in the gospel, we have to endure hardness as the good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. But the last 40 years of our preaching has made us weak. Many in the church today don't see themselves as soldiers, but when I grew up in the church, the old saying said, we are soldiers in the army of the Lord. I feel like shouting right now. Many of us, we have become pop stars in the church. We are seeking fame and we are seeking fortune. We have become modern day spiritual Kardashians in the church. We have become modern day spiritual, listen, uh, 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 individuals that all we are concerned about is the hand of the Lord. And many of you, listen to me, many of you are talking about the Lord is bless you and don't even know that Satan told Jesus if he would fall down when he was in the world. He said, you fall down and worship me. I will give you all the kingdoms of the world. Many of you who are attributing your wealth and your power and your influence to the blessing of the Lord, it is a lie from the pit of hell and Satan, your father, has told it to you and you have b bought it lock, stock, and barrel. Many of you, your blessings have not come from the Spirit of the Lord. Your blessings have come from Satan himself. And it is one of the most dangerous principles when you think the Lord is with you and he is not with you. You are not going to sit up there and gain your wealth and your fame and your fortune. Jesus told us to be servant leaders. We are not to lord over his people as the Gentiles do. And many of you, you say all manner of perverseness sing, rap all manner of perverseness. You live in all all kind of perverse ways and then you're going to sit up there and say my father is blessing you is he schizophrenic he is not schizophrenic he is not bipolar he is not unstable and precarious in his mind. He said, I changed not. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We got to get this thing down in our spirit. So many of us have become our own gods. We are leading our own lifestyles, not according to the word of the Lord, but according in the apostate church, you all are living according to your version of it. Unbelievers, you completely reject it. Out of sight, out of mind. You don't want to hear it. And many of you, you are listening to pastors and apostles and bishops who refuse to preach this word. The Lord is commanding all men everywhere to repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. There is no way out of this series of judgments other than to come to him and bow your heart and to bow your knee before King Jesus, acknowledge him as your Lord, and then receive the baptism of his spirit. John the Baptist said, I indeed baptize you with water, but not many days from now. Listen to me, there's one coming after me that's going to baptize you and he's going to baptize you with fire and the Holy Ghost. King Jesus told Nicodemus, except a man be born of the water and the spirit. That's capital S. That's the Holy Ghost. He shall not see the kingdom. He cannot see the kingdom, nor can he enter it. The sinner's prayer, many of you, may get you entrance into the church, but it shall not. Hear the Holy Ghost carefully. It shall not give you entrance into the kingdom. The Holy Ghost, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, the scripture said, is the eternal power of the world to come. And many of you think you're safe. Many of you have avoided and have and have bypassed the word of the Lord when it tells us to work our, our salvation with fear and trembling. Many of you are preaching this heretical doctrine, once saved, always saved. Wrong! Because the scripture says it's impossible to restore such a one who has tasted of the heavenly powers and the good word of God and the Holy Ghost, that they shall turn from it to renew them Again, seeing as they crucify the Lord Jesus afresh, get it down in your spirit. Many of you pastors, you apostate pastors and bishops and apostles and preachers, it's not a new thing. The first century play church was plagued with men like you and all the apostles from Jude all the way to, to, to Paul and to Peter, all of them wrote concerning you. The apostle John wrote concerning you. You false apostles, you false prophets, bishops, overseers, you individuals 
angels are nothing new in the earth realm. You false prophetic voices, you are nothing new. But let me tell you this, the, the prophet Jeremiah didn't, the, the measure of a true servant of the Lord, the measure of a true watchman, the measure of a true prophetic voice, a true prophet, apostle, bishop, a deacon, the a elder, the true measure of a prophetic voice is when the Lord said through the prophet Jeremiah, had these false prophets stood in my counsel, they would have turned my people from their sin. Isaiah 58 and 1 says that that we are to cry aloud and turn the people from their sin. And I want to praise the Lord because when we began, when this plague first hit in 2020, I hadn't heard a message on repentance and sin in so long. But I thank the Lord that a younger generation is rising up now and they are beginning, they are watchmen. And the Lord is beginning to put the word of the kingdom in their mouths to repent. They are as bold as lions. For the scripture says, the wicked flee when no man pursueth them. We are not pursuing you, wicked, unbelieving generation. We we are not pursuing you. We are uh, unveiling for you what is happening before your very eyes. We are unveiling as watchmen. The Lord has commanded us to sound the alarm to tell you what thus saith the Lord that is before your very eyes as it concerns these series of judgment. Listen to me. We are here to unveil for you why you are going through this so you have the opportunity to turn to the Lord and come out of this perverse and wicked way that you're in so you can be saved for the word of the Lord says it is the Lord's will that no man perish no man perish and so we are preaching under a strict command the Lord says to his watchmen as he said in the blueprint to the prophet Ezekiel if you warn them then and they refuse to listen then they will die and their blood will be upon their own head but he says to us if we refuse to warn you then you will still die in your sin but your blood will he require at our hands and I know my brothers and sisters in the body of Christ notice I didn't say this apostate church I know the watchmen in the body of Christ none of us are going to be guilty of this for we are going to preach from the rooftops Jesus said to us what I tell you in the ear that you should preach upon the rooftops you, and listen, we are at the command of the Lord, and I am preaching upon the rooftops what the Lord tells me in my inner spirit and in my inner ear when I am in communion with him. <laughs> Many of us are plagued. Many of you are walking around in the nations of the world today as the God on the, on the throne of your own heart. But here's what the Spirit of the Lord sent me to say to, to all of you on tonight, thou art a man. That is the subject concern on tonight. Thou art a man. Get it down in your spirit. Thou art a man. Even though you want to lift yourself up as your own God and as a God on the throne of your own heart, you are subject to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, whose son is Jesus Christ by revelation of the Holy Ghost. And you shall not escape this word. And you cannot escape this word. It is ineluctable and ineludible. And we need to get that down in our spirits. You can keep rejecting this word. You can keep going around this word. But it will be to your own damnation and your own destruction. I know many of you, this is not the word that you wanted to hear. But it is all I am going to preach by revelation and commandment of the Holy Ghost. Listen to me. Thou art a man. Many of you need to get that down in your spirit because you have become so prideful and haughty, especially in this apostate church, in the halls of our government. We're watching it right now. This Biden administration and all of its cabinet members are consistently passing laws and passing legislation that is in clear violation of the word of God. And I'm not saying this because I'm against President Biden or for President Trump or for this one or for, I am on the Lord's side, the watchmen of the Lord, the true prophets of the Lord. We are not on any man's side. We are not on any group, any faction. We are on the Lord's side. We are servants of another kingdom. We are servants of the kingdom of the God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel, whose son is Jesus Christ. Get it down in your spirit. This is not a choosing of sides. 
Republicans, but this is a sober-minded unveiling of a president and administration who insist on everything they pass is an unclear violation of the word of God. And so what do we think is going to happen here? United States of America, nations of the world, what do we think is going to happen when we contend and when we insist on rebelling and being stubborn to the word of God, we insist on rejecting it, we are headed down this path headlong, spiraling into damnation. What do we think is getting ready to occur here but a purging in the earth? Jesus said in John 15, I am, my father is the husband, amen, and I am the true vine. You are the branches. All of us who believe, and he says he will purge this vine that we may bear more fruit. There's a purging in the earth now. That's what these series of judgments represent. It's a purging in the earth. Many are perishing. And not just because of the coronavirus. You read Revelation 6. There are many. The man walked into a spa in Atlanta yesterday and shot up all of these people. And what difference does their, their race or their ethnicity uh, matter? They're of the human race. But what difference does their ethnicity make? All nations, according to Acts, the book of Acts, all nations were made in one blood. We need to get this down in our spirit. All nations were made in one blood. And this man walks in a spy yesterday and starts killing everybody. You know why? Because he had the doctrine of a perverse word in his heart. Many of us, our doctrine is killing us. And it is causing us to kill others. And might I remind you, this is the red horse in the four horsemen of the apocalypse. He takes the peace between one another. He causes us to kill one another. When you see this type of action that this man committed yesterday, this is the red horseman of the apocalypse riding. Our economics is messed up. That's the black horse. The white horse is war. And we're hearing wars and rumors of wars, just as Jesus said. And there is one coming. As good as you hear my voice, that white horse is riding right now. And then there's the pale horse, killing with famine. Death and hell following him. Uh, Psalms 9, the place of the dead, following him. But here's the good news. It is only to those that refuse to humble themselves. That's who the series of judgments has come for. And it is blinding because Job 36 tells us that even though the Lord chastises you, you still won't cry out to him. And so we're going to take a look at the consequences when you do that. Let's go to the word of the Lord. We're going to jump right in here. Listen, we're going to fast track on tonight. We're going to take a look at Ezekiel, the 36th chapter. Again, this is our substratum scripture, beginning at the 20th verse, and I'm just going to read. And then we're going to go right over into Ezekiel, the 28th chapter. Listen, my heart is for you is the series. This is our second period of sharing. I want to reiterate again. And our subject concern is thou art a man. We are going to have to understand that. We are not gods, and we are not as gods. We are men. We are but men. We cannot, we can, according to the book of Hebrews, it's appointed unto men to die once. After this, the judgment. According to Revelation, the 21st chapter, there is a second death in the lake of fire. And, and not many are preaching about this second death. They're starting to. The watchmen are sounding off. But many of you in that apostate church, you refuse to preach what you know the Spirit of the Lord is telling you. And those of you who don't know, woe unto you, because you should. But I'm sure it's indicative that you're probably void of the Holy Ghost. See, and that's why you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because without the Holy Ghost, you have no revelation. Because the Lord says before anything is done in the earth, he will reveal his secrets to his servants, the prophets. So we can warn all and let you know ahead of time. 
So you have ample time not to be destroyed. That is the purpose of the watchman. We are here to unveil for you what's getting ready to come down the pike so you and your household do not have to be destroyed in this series of judgment. This series of judgment, Satan and his forces, one third of the angels, according to Revelation 12, they are riding, they are moving through the earth right now. You see that in the book of Job. They are moving through the earth right now, killing, stealing, and destroying. Because that's what the scripture says they do. And then the four horsemen of the apocalypse, those mighty spirits come to purge the earth of all wickedness and wicked people. All at the command of the Lord can do nothing outside of the purview of the command of our Father in heaven. We got to understand these things. We have to spiritually come into the kingdom, not into the church. Everybody's worrying about getting the church. Forget getting in the church. You've got to come into the kingdom where your eyes and your ears and your heart comes open, not just to see and to hear, but to perceive and understand the revelation that the Holy Ghost has given us before it's too late. There are people in the place of the dead right now. There are people in hell right now. And many of you don't even know they're there. And this is why we're preaching to you. Hell is real. We're going to see this in a minute when we read. All right, let's, I'm, I'm, I'm hastening because I'm telling you, my spirit is high in the Holy Ghost. I'm just trying to get this out to us because, listen, I don't want to see anybody perish, anybody who has the Holy Ghost and is concerned about the things that our Father in Heaven is concerned about. All my brothers and sisters who, who are believers, we know this. If it's, our, if it's our Father's will that no man perish, then certainly it's our will that no man perish. And this is why I preach, and I've been preaching and teaching for 28 years because I'm not about fame and fortune. I'm not about any of that. I am preaching the gospel for one reason and one reason only. And woe is me. I'll say it like the Apostle Paul. If I preach not the gospel, the Lord has commanded me to preach. And if I don't, I am out of here. I know it. I don't know what kind of tiptoe through the tulip, fluffy pink slipper, pink robe Jesus many of you preachers are preaching. But it is not the one that I serve. It is not the one that the body of Christ serves. It is not the bride of Christ. It is not the King Jesus that we know. And you're going to see how strong his words are to the religious leaders of his day. And he said, I changed not. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore because the Son of God is God. And so his word today, it, it, it has the same velocity and force. And he is requiring men to obey his commandment in this day, just 21 centuries after his death. He is commanded and his burial and his resurrection. He is commanding us with as much force and velocity to obey the truth of his word in our generation as in the first century church. Get it down in your spirit. Please, we have to. This is serious. This is deathly business now. We have deathly manifestations breaking out all over the earth. And, and we got folks sitting around, oh, well, it's just chance and coincidence. Oh, that's just, you know, that's... No! The forces of evil are riding. And according to Revelation 12, it says, Woe unto the habitants of the earth, because for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, for he knows he hath but a short time. We're not in the last days anymore, as opposed to my father's generation growing up in the church. On the prophetic timeline now, we are in the last hours approaching the last minutes. you got to get that down in your spirit. There is no more time to fool around here. We have got to get serious about coming into the kingdom. Forget the church, forget the preachers, forget the fame, forget the fortune. The only one we should be listening now is to, is, is to the Holy Ghost. And if you can't hear him for yourself, he has anointed vessels. We need to turn off all of these apostate preachers. And we should only be listening to the watchman who the Holy Ghost is speaking through. And he gave us the marker. If these false prophets had stood in my council, they would have turned my people from their sins. But what are we preaching today about houses and cars and all this foolishness? And I'm going to bellow it and I'm going to say it until it fills the whole world. What are we preaching about today? When Jesus said, what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Ezekiel, the 36th chapter and the 20th verse reads, And when they entered unto the heathen, whither they went, they profaned my holy name. When they said to them, these are the people of the Lord and are gone forth out of his land. But I had pity for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen. That's you, apostate church. Whither they went, 
And certainly we've done it all over the world. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. He reiterates that again. And I will sanctify my great name. This is the, this, after this series of judgment, this is the season that we're coming to for the latter outpouring, the latter day, the latter rain outpouring of the Holy Ghost. It will be greater than in the days of Pentecost. For truly, the prophet said that the latter rain shall be greater than the former. Get it down in your spirit. He said, and I will sanctify my great name, which was profane among the heathen. That's all of you apostate shepherds. Which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. It's coming. Fasten your seatbelt. A great outpouring of the Holy Ghost is coming. We don't need another civil rights movement. We need revival. We need a quickening of the spirit and heart of mankind. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. This, the, old, the New Testament version of the scripture is when Jesus told the disciples, you are clean to the word that I have spoken unto you. Uh, then I will sprinkle, verse 25, for those of you just joining or will be joining Ezekiel the 36th chapter. This is our substratum scripture. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Listen to the strong language uh, here. Will I cleanse you? And a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. This is the remedy to this plague of sin. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you. That's the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and most of you thought it was just New Testament. Here's your Old Testament's version of it right here. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues. That's according to my word, and not all this perverse word that many of us are walking according to, even in this apostate church, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. And this reminds me of when Jesus said, those that love me do my commandments. All of you who keep saying you love the Lord Jesus, but you do not do his word, you are liars and the truth is not in you, according to the apostle John. Come on, first John, the first chapter, you are liars and the truth is not in you. And Jesus said, the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers of the Lord shall worship him in spirit and in truth. I feel like catching on and caught on fire in here. I feel like jumping out this window. I'm telling you, because the spirit of the Lord is high in this war room. Listen to me. And he says, I, and I will, verse 27, put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them and you shall dwell in the land that I gave to you your fathers and ye shall be my people and I will be your God. That's the baptized body of believers, the ecclesia in the Greek, the called out sanctified ones, the separated ones. And it says, verse 29, I will also save you from all your uncleannesses, plural, put a middle pin on that and I will call for the corn and will increase it and lay no famine upon you. This reminds me of 2 Chronicles the, if my, the 20th chapter, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, the Lord says, then and only then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. We need to get this down in our spirits. I feel like preaching right now. I'm trying to call my spirit down but this stuff gets so good and so high to it so holy in my spirit it just burns it's like jeremiah said it's like fire shut up in my bones Whoo, jesus i'm telling you this thing is in my spirit listen verse 30 and i will multiply the food of the tree and in, and the increase of the field that ye shall receive no more reproach of famine amongst the heathen when we come into the Lord, when we come into the kingdom by the, the repentance of our sins and, 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 and the baptism, the reception of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, all of these series of judgments ends for us and our households. You got to get it down in your spirit before it's too late. Because if not, you shall hear the revelation of the Holy Ghost. He that hath ears, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to this apostate church and to all you unbelievers. Listen to me. If you do not turn from this wicked, crooked, and perverse way that you're in, you shall perish not many days from now.
Did it down in your spirit. You must turn and you must do it yesterday. Listen, we're going to Ezekiel the 26th chapter. This is our subject text on tonight. This is the main thought. Thou art a man. You're getting ready to see where the Spirit of the Lord affirmed that in the scriptures with me because you know, listen, when the Holy Ghost is teaching, he always affirms with his servants in the word of God. If you are getting a revelation from the Spirit of God and he's not affirming it in the scriptures, let me explain something to you. You're getting a revelation from a spirit, but it ain't the Holy Spirit. It's not the Holy Spirit. you got to get that in your mind and in your heart. Whenever the Holy Ghost gives us revelatory word, it is always affirmed in the word of God. They are one in the same and cannot be separated and should not be separated. Listen, you say, Bishop, how do you know? I always and will always take you to the word. Jesus said, I am going to send another one like unto me and he is going to teach you and guide you and lead you in all truth. He is going to bring into your remembrance whatsoever I have commanded you he will lead us into all truth that is through the revelation from our father's heart indirectly into our spirits as he induces our hearts with the concern of our father's heart and his word and his leading and his guidance and then he will signify in the word of God this is why I love what Bishop No Jones said many years ago he said you cannot have a relationship with Jesus if you don't have one with your Bible listen to me we have got to have a relationship with with our Bible if we are going to have one with Jesus and many of us don't even own Bibles it is absolutely blind to me how many people how many people do not own Bibles me, myself and the first lady were in the store today and this mother was buying her her daughter her own Bible I mean a beautiful one and she had it engraved with her name on it and mom had one listen to me the greatest gift you can give your children parents is the Holy Bible the Word of God get it down in your spirit and listen Ezekiel 28 the 28th chapter of the first to the 10th verse reads the word of the Lord came again unto me saying son of man Say unto the prince of Tyrus, this is the king of a city called Tyre. Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up. Notice forensically the strong language here. Because thine heart is lifted up and thou hast said, I am God. There it is again. There's that perverse word again. You see it in Genesis 3. Now you're seeing it several millennia later in this king of Tyre. I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas, yet... Thou art a man. Get it down in your spirit. This is where our subject thought comes from. Our subject concern right there. Yet thou art a man and not God. Though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. And that's what many of people do. When you don't live according to the word of God and you are in control of your own life and you have not surrendered your will to King Jesus' will, you have become your own God. But the Spirit of the Lord sent this watchman to tell you, you are not God and you are not as God. Thou art a man. You are just a man in the species of mankind. You are not divine. I'm going to pause so we can get it down in our spirit. You are not God and you are not a God and you are not as God. You are a man. Which means we can die. Not once, but twice. And we're in need of a savior. I'm so sick and tired of people talking about, oh, I'm so good and I'm so, uh, you know, and I try to be good and I try. Listen, the Bible says all our righteousness is like filthy rags. The Bible says that the Lord has concluded, has uh, concluded all men in sin. Why? That he might send his son to save us. Our all, all, all our righteousness is like filthy rags. The Lord has concluded all in sin. Another scripture says all of us have like sheep have gone backwards from the Lord. All of us have gone astray from his word, his presence, his kingdom, and his way. Notice the word all in all of those scriptures. Get it down in your spirit. Mm-hmm. All of us, 
So flush the spirit down the toilet of how good we are and how much good we do. The Lord is saying it's all like filthy rags. We got to get, we have no righteousness before Christ. We have no goodness that God is going to accept to let us in his kingdom. There is nothing we can bring him. There is nothing we can do before him that is going to cause us to accept him. Our only acceptance in him is when we accept his son, Jesus Christ. Not Muhammad, not Buddha, not Harry Krishna, not Confucius, not the Dalai Lama, not the Pope, not the President of the United States, the King, Presidents, the Queen of England, none of them. For the book of Acts tells us there is none other given of under, there is no other, he says, neither is there salvation in any other, there is no other name under heaven given amongst men, whereby we must be saved. Pick up your Bible and go to Acts the fourth chapter. It says, neither is there salvation in any other. Bible believing faith. And King Jesus as the Son of God is an exclusivist faith, which means 4 billion out of almost 7 billion people on this planet, if they took their last breath, would be on their way to hell right now. I said it, I'm, I'm listen, it is super egregiously and highly inflammatory, and I will not be taking it back. We got 1 million Hindus, 1 million Catholics, 1 million Muslims, and 1 billion Catholics, 1 billion Hindus, 1 billion Muslims, and 1 billion communists on this planet right now. That's 4 billion people that if they took their last breath, and you mean to tell me you apostate leaders in the church, you got time to talk about houses and cars and shouting over getting money and all that. Are you out of your mind? Clearly you are. Because Apostle James says, you are double-minded and unstable in all your ways. Repent now while you have a chance. And I'm going to tell you, we have lost many overseers in the church in 2020. And by revelation of the Holy Ghost, I said this, and, and he is going to have me reiterate it right here again. Many of them are in hell right now. I said it. I know it's super egregiously inflammatory. I know I will come under persecution, and I am not recanting my statement. Many of them are burning right now. Just because your thoughts about them mean nothing before the Lord. They must answer to Him, not you, not me. And I'm telling you right now, there are some of them that didn't make it. I don't care how much you love them. When we transgress the word of the Lord, we are subject. Jesus said there is nothing done in the darkness that will not be reckoned in the light. Some of them, their names are in the book of the dead. According to Revelation, the, t the 21st chapter, their names were not in the Lamb's book of life. Jesus said, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, in your name we've done many wonders. Listen, we've cast out demons, fed the hungry, clothed the naked, fed the, uh, uh, helped the poor, and we've even cast out demons. He said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. The disciples cast out demons. And yet when Jesus got ready to go to the cross, the Bible says that the Old Testament scriptures might be fulfilled, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. They all fled and forsook him. The ones that cast out demons. Come on, we got to get a word of wisdom and a word of revelation, knowledge, and power in the Holy Ghost in this Bible. Because many of us are not seeing King Jesus. We're seeing some watered-down, weak, pansy form of him. But he is a conquering king. He is the king of kings and the lord of lords. And we got to get it down in our spirit. Said, so Bishop, you sound kind of upset. I am mad at the devil. Bent on destroying his works. Jesus told us we have to work the works of him that sent us while it is day, for the night cometh when no man can work. You say, Bishop, you need to speak this and truth and love. There is no greater truth in love than to preach the unadulterated word of God straight with no filter, non-watered down, with no chaser. That is absolute truth. That is absolute truth, and that is love. How does somebody love you by lying and keeping the absolute truth from you? That makes them liars, not lovers. And we have many pastors and we have many apostate leaders in this church right now who have become liars, have turned the churches into dens of thieves instead of houses of worship. I've said it.
They don't like you. You can take this video and send it to all of them. Because it is time. They are leading the people astray. And I'm reminded that Jesus tells us, he told the scribes, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees, you search the world over to find one disciple, one proselyte, and then after you've made him, you've made him twofold more, the child of the devil of hell than yourself. Many of you pastors and bishops, you apostate overseers and leaders, you have searched the world over to make disciples and proselytes, planted churches, and all you have planted is the synagogues of Satan. The Lord is clear in Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, I will say it until the, the, the skies fall out of the heavens. The Lord says, if these false prophets had stood in my counsel, if they were true prophets, they would have turned my people from their sin. And many of you have not done that. And that's why you're in jeopardy of judgment right now. You're in jeopardy of your name not being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Because your priority is not the, has not, is not the salvation of souls. And many of you started that way, but you have not, you are not finishing that way. You got to finish like the Apostle Paul said, forgetting those things that are behind me. That means the name, the pain, the wealth, all of that stuff. You got to press for the mark. Of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. You got to, you got to count all that stuff, but done. Jesus was clear. King Jesus was clear. If you attempt to save your life, you're going to lose it. But if you lose it for my sake, then will you save it? I'll ask all you apostate leaders, not just all of you unbelievers, what is it going to profit you to gain the whole world, but yet lose your eternal soul? I hear the Holy Ghost preaching in here in this war room on tonight. What is it going to profit you? If you die and you take your, you can't take any of this stuff with you. So what you had comfort in this life? So did the rich man. And Lazarus was afflicted. But when they died, Lazarus went into the bosom of Father Abraham. And the rich man went to hell. Bishop, I don't believe in hell. You don't need to and you, but you will when you get there. You will believe in it. And won't nobody have to tell you that it's real? Because you will experience the flames, baby. Get it down in your spirit. Don't care if you believe it, there, there's no hell. You believe when you get there. Get it down in your spirit. Listen, we're in Ezekiel the twenty-eight chapter, first to the tenth verse. This is our found uh, our 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 um, subject text for tonight. For those of you just joining me or will be joining me, verse three: Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret. That they can hide from thee. Put a mental pin on that. I'm going to come back to that in a little while here. With thy wisdom and with thy understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. Notice what's happening here forensically. We praise the Lord. First ladies on the line with us uh, on the uh, on the platform with us on the night. First lady, we praise the Lord for you. Love you much. Listen. With thy wisdom and with thy understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. That's many of you apostate leaders today. Come on. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God. Listen to the forensically to the strong language here. Many of you have set your heart as the heart of God, but listen to what he says in verse 7. Behold, whenever the Lord says behold, you better pay careful attention. Fasten your spiritual seatbelt and hold on to your spiritual socks because the Lord is saying, I'm getting ready to rock you. Therefore, I bring strangers upon thee. Mm -hmm. The terrible of the nations. And tell me we're not looking at that right now. And they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. United States of America, if this isn't this nation right now, then I don't know which one it is. Because they are defiling our beauty and our brightness right now. Get it down in your spirit. Verse 8, they shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths. Notice the plural there. Because again, I'm going to say it according to Hebrews, and according to Revelation, the 21st chapter, you cannot die only. It's not just possible to die once. You can die twice. People, let's get it down in our spirits. Thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? Question mark. But thou shalt be a man and no God. 
Look at how matter of fact God is through the prophet here. Thou shalt be a man and know God in the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised. That is the ungodly. That's the backslidden. That's those that are far from holiness. By the hand of strangers. For I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. He didn't say he was going to do it. He said I have spoken it. You want to know what the judgment of the Lord is? Go back on the aforementioned platforms and in our series, Heaven's Master Builder, it's 20 parts. We go over, we cover what the judgment of the Lord is. There is a teaching in particular in there. Who uh, The subtitle is Known by His Judgment. Go watch that. Get it in your spirit. Get it down in your spirit. Because many of us are walking around preaching doom and gloom. That's not the purpose of watchmen. The purpose of the watchman is to unveil to you what's getting ready to happen to you because of the wickedness of your own hands. You're getting ready to turn your nation, your home, and your white house, the outhouse, the church house, and the state house into the place of the dead. And that's what's happening right now. This is not by chance and coincidence. It's by an unveiling of heaven to earth that the wickedness of your own hands is causing your global warming because your perverse word is proceeding out of your mouth. It is not the cars that are heating this planet up. It's your perverse word. Get the revelation of the Holy Ghost. It is not coal that's heating up the earth. It's your perverse word. The hot, useless air proceeding out of your lungs that the Lord created us with and gave us his very pneuma. And yet we are, we are breathing out slaughterings and threatenings and so many people threatening people. And we are breathing out evil and corruption and wickedness. And creation is rejecting us. You do know it is a living creature, do you not? And if you don't know, Heaven's Master Builder series, we taught on that. Go back and watch it on all the aforementioned platforms, please. Thou art a man. Now let me explain something as we go further here. Okay? Let me explain something to us. In this story, it appears that it's talking about the king of Tyre, but something more ominous and nefarious is going on in this text because there is a duality and a parallelism in this text as we say in theology. Yes, this is a physical human being that is being referred to here in Ezekiel, the 28th chapter, and we are going to, the Spirit of the Lord has laid on my heart to break this chapter in three parts. We're going to do a three-part. Our next three teachings are going to be from this chapter, so stay tuned with us because I'm telling you, the Spirit of the Lord is getting ready to knock our socks off. Listen, as we delve further into this chapter, what you're going to discover is that the Lord is not just speaking to this king, but he's speaking to the one that is standing in this king. This king is actually has the spirit of Antichrist in him. Satan is indwelling this king. He is indwelling him as much as the Antichrist in the book of Revelation and Judas Iscariot in the four synoptic gospels. This king is indwelt by Satan. You say, Bishop, how do you know? I know because in verse 1 through 10, he's, there are some things being described in this entire chapter, and I will point them out as we go further in the teaching, that cannot possibly... Uh, apply to a human being. When we read further, he talks about him being the anointed cherub. Humans are not angels. We're referred to in the book of Revelation, he refers to the pastors of the seven churches as angels, but he's not talking about angelic beings. He's talking about the work and the oversight that they have in his kingdom. But this refers to to this one as an anointed chair. It describes him in ways we'll get into in the next lesson here. I don't have time for this now. I have another assignment in these first 10 verses. He says, behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. Now, how is that possible? There is no secret that they can hide from thee. That doesn't apply to mankind. Wiser than Daniel? Daniel's wisdom came from the Lord. So how is could this king be wiser than Daniel? What he's saying here is not that this king's wisdom supersedes God. What it's saying is it's more ancient to Daniel's. But this king, this king lived before Daniel. Hello? 
This king lived before Daniel. But 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 he is talking about this king. Come on and get it in your spirit. He's talking about this king in terms that can't possibly apply to him. Your wisdom is wiser than Daniel? No. There's a duality here. This man, Satan, has entered this man. Just like he did at Judas Iscariot. Pick up the Synoptic Gospels and read it. Especially Matthew. The Bible says when he dipped his hand in that dish with Jesus, Satan immediately entered his heart. That was demonic possession, not by any of the other spirits, as if the man of Gadara, better known as the Gadarene demoniac, that's what you all know him as in the scripture. The man of Gadara was indwelt by legion, not Satan himself, but his cohorts. Judas Iscariot was indwelt by Satan himself, and so will the Antichrist of the book of Revelation be, of the tribulation period. Satan is not, we must understand one principle in order for that to make sense biblically. Satan is not, omnip, is not omnipresent, excuse me, like God. He cannot be everywhere at all times. He can only be in a single place at a single time. Now, he is created on a higher order than we are, so he can move by thought. He can move faster than the speed of light. He could be here and there in a, by a thought. Because he's in a higher creative order than we are, but he is not omnipresent like God. He cannot be everywhere at all times. But he is in this king, and we know it because this king is typological of Judas Iscariot. More so, he is typological of the Antichrist in the book of Revelation who has the same type of great wisdom. The prophet Daniel says he understands dark sentences. So this can't possibly refer to this king of Tyre. It's that the king of Tyre is indwelt by Satan. Satan is the one with wisdom greater than Daniel. It's older than the prophet Daniel's. It's not greater than God, but it's greater than Daniel's. Because he was in, listen, he, before the Garden of Eden, Satan was with the Lord before he fell from heaven. When we get into the second lesson, you're going to see that. If you want to read ahead, go ahead so you can be ready next time uh, we fire this, um, this war room up for everybody. Listen to me. This can't possibly refer to just a man. Now, now that I've set that in our spirit, let's go a little further. Turn with me to Proverbs, the 14th chapter. Now, let me explain this. When you look at this king, look at the word, the perverse word in his heart. He's saying, I am a God. I've gotten great riches. I have wisdom greater than the prophet Daniel. You know who that sounds exactly like? Satan. That's how I know Satan is indwelling this king. Because that's the same perverse word. That's the same set perverse word, i.e. doctrine, that Satan gave uh, Eve in the Garden of Eden. And when we go further in Ezekiel 28, as we, trans, uh, as we traverse through these next two periods of Sharon, you're going to see exactly what I'm referring to. So we're not just considering the, the king of Tyre here, or Tyrus in other words, we're also considering Satan and dwelling him. We have to. And this is the problem with many today. Many today are indwelt by the spirit of Antichrist. What does that mean? And there are some that are even demonically possessed. But what does it mean to be indwelt by the spirit of Antichrist? It means that satanic forces are influencing us by the spirit of Satan. Jesus told the scribes, Sadducees, and Pharisees, scribes, Sadducees, and Pharisees, scribes, Sadducees, and Pharisees, excuse me, you are of your father, the devil. So when all of us keep saying, we're all the children of God, wrong. That is wrong according to the scriptures. According to the scriptures, again, Heaven's Master Builder series, uh, all the aforementioned sites, you can go on there and get all 20 of those periods of Sharon so that you can get this principle and this doctrine in your spirit. We taught on that. We are not all the children of God. The scripture says, though the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. And in order to be led by the Spirit of God, you have to be indwelt by the Spirit of God. So all of you non-Holy Ghost filled, non-Holy Ghost uh, indwelt individuals, you are not the children of God. G King Jesus tells you who your father is spiritually. Your father is Satan himself. 
And we read and we taught on how he takes you captive at his will. You think you're doing your own will. Wrong. You have been taken captive at his will and you don't know it. So the scripture tells us to preach glad tidings to you, the unadulterated truth of the word of God, peradventure you may recover yourself from the snare of the enemy. Go ahead and read First and Second Timothy and get that down in your spirit. Mm-hmm. You're not, you're not living your life by your own will. You're living your life by the will of Satan. You're just blinded to it. Because you're walking, and that's what Jesus meant when he said you're walking in spiritual darkness. And so we have a parallel reality here. And this is how Satan's forces work. They induce evil and wickedness in the hearts of men unbeknownst to all of you, apostate church, all you unbelievers. Satan is inducing a perverse word in your heart Every single day and you're living by it and you're being destroyed and you're dying because of it. You're perishing in the way. And the Lord is trying to get you to come to him so he can save you from this reality, from this deathly reality. And yet you refuse to come. But now he's commanding all men everywhere to repent and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Why? That he might bless you. I, we just read it in Ezekiel 36. It's all to bless us. That's the problem. We think the Lord wants to control our life. He just wants to run my life. Listen, I can emphatically testify this. He has done greater and more, further, faster, hard, whatever you want to call it. He has done greater with my life than I even possibly could imagine. Bringing the past the word of the Lord when it says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered the heart into the heart of man the things that God has in store for those that love him. He wants us to come to him so he can bless us, unbeliever, apostate church member, apostate leader, leaders of the nations of the world. Come on now. So we got a dualistic route. But let me tell you, when you set yourself up as God, there is a surefire consequence. We're going to take a look at two more things the Holy Ghost laid in my heart, and then we're going to be done with the spirit of sharing. Let's go. Proverbs, I gave you all the scripture. Let's back up to Proverbs, the 14th chapter, and I want you to notice the language here. Proverbs, the 14th chapter, and the 12th verse says, There is a way which seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. People, unbelievers, Apostate leaders, apostate church members, leaders of the nation of the world. There is a way that seems right unto you, but the Lord is trying to warn you. The end of it is death. Come on. The end thereof are the ways of death. That is what I've turned as deathly manifestation. Let's go further. James, the first chapter, because listen, we are trying to blame this on people, and we're trying to say, oh, this one's to blame, and that one's to blame. No. And you try to say, oh, if God was so loving, he's so good, why is he doing it? The Lord is not in any of this wicked mess. I'm going to show you how these deathly manifestations come about by revelation of the Holy Ghost. This Bible is your blueprint for life, unbeliever apostate church member, apostate leader, leaders of the nations of the world. This Bible is your blueprint. If you will accept it, all the answers you need to life and godliness, to live in this world victoriously and in holiness are in this Bible. The very one that Satan keeps blinding y'all to and, and getting you to not read it at all cost. James, the first chapter 13 through the 15th verse, three verses here says, now listen to how this perverse word comes into our heart. Listen to how these deathly manifestations break loose in our household, in our families, in our communities, and in our nations. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Why? For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. Get it down in your spirit. God is not the source of all this evil. Man, the deathly amalgamation of humanism and Satanism is. that. In other words, that means man working in coherency with satanic forces as they did in the Garden of Eden. Get it down in your spirit. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. That's exactly what happened to Eve. Then when lust hath conceived, meaning when we do the sinful thing, 
and transgress the word of the Lord, it bringeth forth sin and sin when it is finished. In other words, when it runs its course and it is maturated, bringeth forth death. That is the consequence, and it is the only consequence that we are going to receive when we transgress the word of the Lord. We need to get that down in our spirits, and we need to do it yesterday. The final thing the Lord has laid in my heart, let's go to Romans, uh, I gave you Romans 17 and 23, let's go there. We need to take a look at it, because we're talking about doctrine here. This is another thing the Holy Ghost wants us, wants me, uh, wants to show us. Wants me to sound off on. Notice something here. So you say, here, you say, Bishop, how does this perverse word get in our hearts in the first place? Through satanic forces operating in human beings, like your apostate church leaders, your apostate scientists, your apostate, all of these people who are void of the Spirit of God, politicians, doctors, researchers, both in the church and out of the church. Other members who are void of the Spirit of God. Other family members who are void of the Spirit of God. He can use anybody who is void of the Spirit of God. That's why the prophet Isaiah said, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard against them. But what happens, unbeliever and apostate church member, apostate leaders, leaders of the nation of the world, when you're void of the Spirit? You don't have him to lift up a standard against the ways and the wiles of the enemy. According to Ephesians 6. And so you're overtaken by his fiery darts. Which represent the sting of his perverse word. Hitting your heart. And causing you all this suffering, trouble and pain. And you could sit up there and act like you don't understand what I'm saying. And you don't. And I don't know what you're talking about. You can say that all you want. But over 2000 and, uh, uh, 2020. I think it's clear to all of us. That we need to be sober-minded and sober up here and look at what's before us and stop living in a strong lie and a strong delusion. Again, we taught on that in our Heaven's Master Builder series. You can go back and get that teaching to work that thing deep down in your spirit. This is the final thing the Holy Ghost wants me to prophetically utter here. Romans, the sixth chapter, beginning at the 17th verse, but God be thanked. That ye were the servants of sin. Notice the strong language here. But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine. Where did he say they obeyed it from? From the heart. The spirit. The same place the prophet Ezekiel and Ezekiel the 36th chapter. The Lord is saying, I will take that heart of stone out of you and put a heart of flesh in you. I will put my spirit within you. So that you can do, walk in my statutes. In other words, do my commandments, as Jesus said. For them and only then do, is that the qualifying proof of our love for him. It's not according to Isaiah 30, where our lips are with them, but our heart is far from them. No, sir, no, ma'am. But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine. Fasten a mental pin on that. Because we're going to dive into that phrase, that form of doctrine. Our King Jesus gives us instruction on that phrase. And it is it is spellbinding. Come on, it will bind the powers of hell if you get his teaching in your spirit. And we're going to get it on tonight. Verse 18. The B clause of verse 17 says, which was delivered you. How? Through the preaching of the gospel. Through the proclamation of the gospel. By watchmen. By servants who are baptized in the Holy Ghost, hearing the Spirit of God as he is revealing it to them, as he dwells in them and they dwell in his presence internally in our spirits. He in us and we in him. Verse 18, being then made free from sin, ye became servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity... Even so now yield your members, servants to righteousness unto holiness. For the word of the Lord says, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Come on now. Anybody know the word on tonight? If you don't, you need to. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. Notice the strong language. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? That's another problem. Many of us aren't ashamed of the lifestyles we're living. And we're all in degradation and sin. Homosexuality, lesbianism, thieving, murdering, gossiping, lying, backbiting, stealing. 
blasphemers of God and His Son, haters of each other, proud, haughty, come on, and the list goes on and on. What fruit, verse 21, for those of you who are just joining or who, who will be viewing this, what fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are not, ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. There are that consequences again. And we're not going to get away from it. We're not going to get away from it unless we come into Christ. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto what? Holiness, not good and evil, unto holiness. We were never meant to have the knowledge of good and evil in our minds. We were never meant to live in that reality. The Lord told us to stay away from that fruit. But our, but the first four parents, Adam and Eve, partook of it, and then it caused the fall of mankind until Christ came. The reality of Jesus Christ is restoring to us what was lost in Adam. That we no longer have to live apart from God's presence, his power, and his spirit, and his word. We can live in his presence, his power, his spirit, and his word. By his grace and his mercy. We no longer have to die because of sin. But now being made free from sin, we're Romans the 6th chapter, we're at the 22nd verse. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the in everlasting life. Which means we will live when we leave this earth for eternity and not in torment. We will live in paradise. Many of you who keep putting your loved ones in paradise, don't adjudicate too fast. You don't have the power to put your people in heaven or hell. Get it down in your spirit. Read your Bible. You might want to hope they're there. You might want to wish they're there. And that's okay. But let me tell you something. You don't know for sure. Only the Lord knows where anybody went for sure. Because I certify you by revelation of the Holy Ghost. Many people you thought went, didn't. And you're going to find out in that day, if you be so blessed to come into the kingdom, that many that you thought were in the kingdom have gone to the lake of fire. Get it down in your spirit. Folks talking about, at, 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 at funerals talking about, oh, my baby was an angel. Your baby was an angel at seven. He was a drug dealer at 19 and died in a shootout. Stop adjudicating your people to heaven when they live like hell on earth. Let the save. Now, I'm, I'm not saying I'm not advocating. Jesus can save to the utmost. He can save right down to the 11th hour. In other words, he can save right down to their last breath. But don't you try to adjudicate and put him in heaven. Let him do it. Because you don't have the power, and you don't really know if they win. Get it down in your spirit. You can say it all you want. Doesn't mean a hill beans difference. Unless the Lord allows you into his kingdom. And here's the problem. Many of you, your loved one, listen. He said no thief, no murderer, no homosexual, no effeminate. We got a lot of preachers harping on the homosexual and lesbianism, and they should be because that's what the word of the Lord is. That's what the Spirit of the Lord is commanding us to harp on all these works of the flesh, all these sins. But let me tell you something. Even people that are effeminate, you look like a woman and you're not. All the transvestites, all, all of these folks, transgender, all of these folks. Even if you looked apart, you won't enter the kingdom. Those of you who are sympathizing with him won't enter the kingdom. Get it down in your spirit. I love you and I'm going to tell you the truth. Even if it causes me persecution, even if you have to hate me, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not going to sit up here knowing this word is in my heart, knowing I believe and live this word 150% to the infinite power. And sit up there and not tell you what it says and act like I don't know what it says. I love the kingdom of God, my Father in heaven, his Son, the Holy Ghost. I love his spirit. I love this word exponentially. Cannot be mathematically quantified or qualified. And I'm going to tell you the truth of this word when others will lie to you. Because that's what Satan wants them to do to keep you trapped in sin. Verse 22. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God. I read that verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. Listen to the strong language here. For the wages of sin is death. Now what we're going to notice is a choice here. 
but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, and the gift of eternal life is not through any other name on this planet, no matter when the human being lives. It is not through any of these false gods, nor through it is nor is it through nor is the gift of eternal life given through any human being that wants to pose as God. Wrong answer. Get it down in your spirit. The wages of sin is death. Do you see what the Spirit of the Lord is showing us here? You cannot live as God. You cannot live as your own God on the throne of your own heart. The end of it is death. Yes, there's a way that seems right to us. But the Lord says the end of the ways is death. When sin is finished, it brings forth death. In other words, when it maturates, the wages of sin, that speaks of repayment. Come on. Reimbursement. The wages of sin is commensurate with the sin and it is death. Speaks of consequence. For our lifestyles, living apart from the kingdom of God, through his son Jesus Christ. Now, I ask you to put a mental pen, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine. Now listen to what Jesus shows us. Turn with me to Mark the 8th chapter. We're going to investigate this. Mark the 8th chapter. Let's go to Mark the 8th chapter. You should also have Luke 12 and Matthew 16, and this is where we're going to close. Mark the 8th chapter. Notice what Jesus says. 6 through the... I'm sorry, 11 through the 21st verse, it said in the Pharisees, notice who he's talking to. These apostate religious leaders, the same type we have today in this apostate church. And let me say this, we have a reality of two churches in the world today, an apostate one and then the true church, the body of Christ. And I am so tired of you apostles calling them one and the same. They are not one and the same. You are confusing the people, and I'm not saying you're doing it intentionally, but you have to be careful because listen to me. When you keep calling these people believers and you keep calling them, uh, uh, they are not. If you're void of the Spirit of God, you are none of His. You are not a son and a daughter of God if you are void of His Spirit. Come on. Stop calling these people the body of Christ. Stop calling them believers. They are apostate church members in an apostate church that is defected from the principles of the word of God. Their leaders have and they have. And now all of you real ones that have repented, like Jeremiah Johnson and many others, you are being persecuted by them. Because they are not the body of Christ and they are not the true church. They are a deceptive measure of it. Designed by Satan to trick the world that they are the true church. But they do not worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And the stuff you all are describing and how they're persecuting you. And by the way, that persecution is a revelatory word spoken by all the watchmen in 2020. So it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. Because the Holy Ghost had us speak ahead of time that they were going to do that. Go back on the aforementioned platforms and the lessons in 2020. You will see the Spirit of the Lord had me prophesying and it wasn't just me. It was many other of his watchmen the world over. And the Pharisees came forth. Mark 8, 11th verse, began to question with him, seeking of him a sign from heaven tempting him. And be, and he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why doth this generation seek after a sign? Verily I say unto you, there shall no sign be given unto this generation. And he left them and entering into the ship again departed to the other side. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread, neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. And he charged them saying, Take he, beware, listen to what Jesus says, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. And they reason among themselves saying, is it because we have no bread? See, they started, they jumped right in the, into carnality. 
right into carnal thinking. No spirit. Because they're void of the spirit of God. And when Jesus knew it, he saith unto them, Why reason ye? Because ye have no bread? Perceive ye not, neither understand. See, they have eyes to see, but they don't perceive. They have ears to hear, but they don't understand. <clears throat> have ye your heart yet hardened? Come on, Ezekiel 36. Stony hearts. Because you're void of the Spirit. Your heart hardens. So that you cannot perceive and understand the Word of God. And if you can't understand His Word, you won't perceive and understand His warnings. Hello, get it down in your spirit. Having eyes, he says, ye see not, and having ears, hear ye not. Do ye not remember when I break the five loaves among five thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? He questions them. They say unto him, twelve. And in a separate incident, many people don't realize, the feeding of the 5,000 was not the only time Jesus performed this type of miracle. And when the seven among 4,000... How many baskets full of fragments took he up? They answered seven. <clears throat> See? Verse 21, and he said unto them, how is it that ye do not understand? It's a rhetorical question. He knows how they don't understand. They don't understand because they're void of his spirit. They're intellectually, they intellectually acknowledged the miracles he did, but they did not receive the power of the revelation of it because they were void of the spirit of God like many of you are today. Now, notice he says, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. What is this leaven then that he's referring to? Go with me to Matthew the 16th chapter. I gave you Matthew the 16th chapter. Let's go to Matthew the 16th chapter and investigate this further. Further, Matthew 16, chapter 6 through the 12th verse. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So we're looking at how Mark sees this situation. Now we're looking at Matthew's uh, uh, take on this situation. And they reason among themselves, saying, so he reports the same thing. Is it because uh, we have taken no bread? Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith. Why reason ye among yourselves? You know why they're reasoning? They need logic because they don't have spiritual revelation of the Holy Ghost. You have nothing else but reason and ratiocination and logic when you don't have the Spirit of God indwelling in you. When the Spirit of God is indwelling in us, we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of our Father in Heaven, His very mind. So logic then becomes an assistant not what we're led by. We're led by the mind of Christ through the Spirit of God. Let's catch the revelation there. Do ye, verse 9, not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, how many baskets ye took up? Question. Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Question mark again. How is it, verse 11, that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Their doctrine. Their, he said, beware of their doctrine because their doctrine is a perverse word. Jesus told them that he told the scribes, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, and the hypocrites, you are whitewashed tombs full of dead men's bones. Outwardly you appear clean. Inwardly you are ravening wolves. Come on, this is King Jesus talking. And I'm so sick and tired of this weak, flimsy, and tenuous church at best talking about, oh, we do, we shouldn't speak like that, and we're speaking too tough, and the word's too strong, and the word... Listen, your master spoke strong. Your master spoke forensically. Your master didn't pull any punches. And he said, as the master is, so shall the servants be. I feel like cartwheeling out of here right now. I feel like preaching. I await, flush this spirit down the toilet that Jesus doesn't speak through his servants with strong, powerful word. He does. 
And if you stand as a servant in his counsel, you will turn his people from their sin, not induce them to it. Seek ye the kingdom of God first and his righteousness. That's his spirit. That's the only way you can get his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. And he wasn't talking about wealth and riches and fame. He was talking about your daily bread will be added unto you. And it's the same thing he's talking about here. But for the last 30, 40 years of preaching, the last generation, we've been telling people how to get famous, rich, and fortunate. And it is a demonic lie from the pit of hell. It is a doctrine, uh, uh, the Apostle Paul says, of demons. You apostate leaders been preaching a doctrine of demons. Get it down in your spirit. Jesus told them he wasn't talking about bread. He's talking about the doctrine they're preaching. Just like you apostate leaders. Just like you false prophets the world over. Turn with me finally, and we're going to close here to Luke the 12th chapter. We're going to see what Dr. Luke has to say on this matter. Luke the 12th chapter, first through the 10th verse. In the meantime, verse 1, when they were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people insomuch that they trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, be ye of the, beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees. Now what was the leaven? We said according to Matthew 16, it was doctrine. What was their doctrine? Here in Luke 12, Dr. Luke tells you what their doctrine was, which is hypocrisy. Do you see that? Which is hypocrisy? They say they love the Lord. They say they live for the Lord, but they do everything in action. Their fruit speaks otherwise. And so are the leaders of this nation and the leaders of this apostate church in our time. You are hypocrites. You do other than what you induce the people to do. You don't live as the people you lead. Mm-hmm. Snaking, vipering behind closed doors. John the Baptist said of the leaders of his generation. You generation of vipers who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Well, these watchmen are warning you to flee from the wrath to come, you viperous leaders of this apostate church and of this nation and the nations of the world, you viperous overseers in the church, you viperous false prophets. Jesus says for there, King Jesus says for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. Come on, Governor Cuomo. He's suffering from that right now. And that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets and shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them. Listen carefully that kill the body and after that have no more that they can do. This is your king speaking. Or should be your king. This is King Jesus speaking to all of you. I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed uh, hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. He's talking about his father in heaven, Father God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings, and not one of them is forgotten before God, but even the very hairs of your head are all numbered? Fear not, therefore, ye are more valued than many sparrows. Also I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men, all you apostate leaders and unbelievers, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him, but unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. So all of you preachers that clearly have not read your Bibles close enough, there we can, there is a sin that God will not forgive mankind. I know many of you preach God will forgive every sin. No, he does not. 
He will not forgive you if you blaspheme the Holy Ghost by calling that which is evil good and that which is good evil. And that's what we're seeing in these times. We are puffed up in our spirits. We have become prideful and haughty as a nation. We believe that we can't be brought down. This is a lie and not many days from now, according to the prophetic revelation of the Holy Ghost uttered by this watchman, the United States of America will no longer be the superpower it was and it will never return to that state again. And we're already in the down spiral because the Lord never intended for us us to do that. Wealth always comes to a nation that uh, that makes uh, 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 it, it, that that not necessarily believes in God, but does not resist His word. An abundance will fall, but the moment you begin to resist, you will fall, and that's what's happening to us. That's exactly what's happening to the United States of America. We are spiraling in a headlong fall with no hope of return except in Christ. And it was never the Lord's intention to make the United States of America a superpower in the flesh. It was his intention to make us a superpower in the Holy Ghost. Get it down in your spirit. There is a reason the United States of America is not in the eschatological timeline or prophetic timeline. There's a reason we're not named. And it is because we are destroyed, but not in the sense that most theologians are saying. By revelation of the Holy Ghost, there is a reason we will no longer be a super, because it was never the Lord's intention for the United States of America to be a world superpower in the flesh. It was his intention, as it was for Israel, for us to be a light to the nation, to be a spiritual superpower, and we have done everything but. Get it down in your spirit. We as a nation have fallen from grace. We will not return to superpower status naturally. But not many days from now, we shall rise again as the valley of dry bones. And Ezekiel 37, as a nation, we will stand up as an exceeding great army on our feet. And this is why the Lord has the watchman prophesying as we are commanded to these dry bones right now. Because he intends for us to stand up spiritually as an exceeding great army and lead the nations of this world in the things of his kingdom, in the life of godliness and holiness. And we shall not stand in any other matter, United States, in any other manner, United States of America. You can put your patriotism away. You can put all that foolishness away. The Lord doesn't care about your patriotism. That's nothing. Fascism, nationalism, and patriotism is nothing more than terms for the gods of blood and soil. And they are not the true and living God. They are false gods. Many of you are idol worshipers. Idol wor worshiping the gods of your own country and patriotism and nationalism. Get it down in your spirit. I know it's highly and egregiously inflammatory, and I won't be retracting the statement. Get that prophetic revelation in your spirit. There's a reason the United States of America is not on the prophetic timeline. Because I believe, by revelation of the Holy Ghost, that the Lord is going to pour his spirit out on the United States of America and this nation as a whole will return to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel and be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And when the rapture occurs, the majority of the people in this nation will be raptured out of here and there will be a remnant here and it will be a, a, a wicked remnant, an unbelieving remnant that will go through the tribulation with the Antichrist. But the rest of us won't be here and the United States of America will cease to be a nation in one day. I have never read that anywhere. I have never, no one's ever preached that that I've heard. No one's ever spoke that. The Spirit of the Lord gave me that in communion in this season as a watchman, and I emphatically speak it by revelation of the Holy Ghost. The United States of America was meant to be the light and the salt to the nations of the world as Israel was, and God is going to bring us back to this place of spiritual prominence. It is not going to be a place of natural prominence. 
And he's going to allow persecution and he's going to allow all these type of series of judgments to come and hit this nation until we come to our knees and come back to the God of the Bible. Get it down in your spirit. Listen, family and friends all across the world, that's all I have time for on tonight. Listen, I ser sincerely enjoyed myself, and I love you. I always say it because I preach the unadulterated, non-filtered, non-watered-down word of God to you. That is true divine love. Listen to me. Until next time, I want to bid you a good night for now.